Are you searching for information on opening a medical spa business and making it profitable within your first year? Are you thinking about buying an existing medical spa or selling one? In this video series, we showed our social media audience how to succeed in their business journey and sound timeless strategies we've been using for over 20 years. We've used all these strategies to grow aesthetic medical practices to seven figure sales and beyond. We've decided to post this valuable information on YouTube because these timeless strategies might be just the thing you need to grow your business and succeed in the coming months and years. Kelly Smith from PGC. Welcome back to another Tuesday Facebook Live. And today I'm gonna to be sharing with you the tips and tricks of how to write a solid business plan. And this is gonna be interesting because I'm gonna explain the different kinds of business plans that you write and why. I want to explain whether you're a startup or a turnaround or whether you're doing this at the beginning of the new year, what is truly important about a business plan, the usable parts, and how a bank business plan or a venture capital business plan and pitch is quite different than the one that you would use yourself to run your business in an organized and um, planned fashion. So with that being said, Happy New Year. I'm glad that everybody is joining us and I'm going to be sharing my tips on business plans, which many of you don't know, but I wrote business plans as part of my profession before I opened my own day spa and med spa. So I do have a lot of thoughts and experience on this. I've written several business plans for small business loans. I've written uh, venture capital pitches. <clears throat> and of course, we've looked at a lot of turnarounds and startups and, and helped with all of the planning associated with that. So thank you for joining me today. And of course, there'll be replays available. And we're just gonna dive right into uh, the meat of the issue here. I am just making sure I can see any questions that come up here, guys. All right. Perfect. So welcome, welcome, welcome. So we're going to talk today about number one, there are different reasons to write a business plan. And I'm going to focus on what you will really use to run your business plan on the day to day um, basis. And those four key elements are slightly different than if you were submitting um, for a loan or for venture capital. And I'll get into the differences at the end, but the key parts that are the most useful for you are going to be, you know, clarifying your financial, your marketing and your operation key initiatives. And I'm going to break those down in detail because I think uh, so many of us get excited about location and what services and, and, and how glamorous the whole thing is going to be. <laughs> and we know that this is a very great business. There's always new things to learn, new things to sell, but you know, it isn't the easiest to run. There's some pretty uh, involved marketing and staffing and training involved and standard procedures because after all, we are offering many times medical procedures, even though our client thinks we're offering a manicure pedicure, they don't even realize what can go wrong with, with one of these services when not rendered correctly. So, you know, why is it your practice where you want it to be or why will it be where you want it to be? And that really comes down to taking the time to plan your business instead of just getting started, build it and they will come. I can guarantee if you take the time to clarify your revenue goals, clarify your market position, look at a SWOT analysis as far as your competitors, understanding digital marketing, knowing why you're creating the services together that you're creating, understanding the size staff it will take. That is really the goal. So no matter what kind of business plan you write or what kind of business plan you operate, there's always three areas to the business and that's financial, marketing and operations. A good business plan is going to go into all three of those areas with step-by-step -step guidance or SOP, standard operating procedures, and key indicators like industry benchmarks. Now, if you're new to the industry, uh, you should seek out some help to write these business plans. You do need to understand industry benchmarks, expenditure benchmarks. You need to understand where the real margins are, which, which services you can charge a lot for that don't cost you much, how to create that unique position in the marketplace, and how to select which services you cannot typically, can't afford to buy all the different things for face and body.
to get started. And sometimes that is a mistake. We'll buy more equipment than we can afford because we haven't gone through the performa. Now you wanna hire an expert in the area that has at least 10 years experience. I've been in this industry since 99. We've helped over 4,000 clients. I've seen the books of hundreds of clients and done many turnarounds and business plans. So for me, it's easy for me to throw these details together fairly quickly, to know what the most popular services are, to know the pitfalls, to know maybe certain equipment to avoid, things like that. You do need an expert in your corner to make sure that you're on track. There's my dog leaving us. Crosser, the PGC pup, he's here. So let's just get into you know the, the business plan itself and the key elements. And I really think it starts at the financial level. <clears throat> now, when I say financial goals, I mean looking at realistic financial goals. So not necessarily what you get from a laser sales rep <laughs> because they are excited about their equipment and they do show you what's possible, but you need some realistic sales goals unless you're getting venture capital money. That's another story. They like big, lofty, audacious goals. Now, for this, we need to go through and list what services you're going to offer, for instance, toxins, fillers, um, RF microneedling, maybe some sort of hydrofacial, um, whether you're surgical or non-surgical. So you've got your injectors, injectables, you've got your lasers and lights, you've got your uh, you know, chemical peels. These are basics. Now, one of the things that's really important is yes, you wanna be unique, but you also need different services that will get a person in the first time. So if you're new to the industry and you start only with a really high-end um, device that is three or four or five thousand uh, dollars to do a procedure, you don't realize that yes, you would like to just do that procedure all day long, but people don't start with that procedure and they don't trust you with their face with that procedure until you've done things like toxins and fillers and things to prove that they're in a safe place. They don't generally walk in and want a resurfacing uh, CO2 or some sort of a in-depth microneedling or um, submental treatment to under the chin. They're going to start with things like Botox and peels and hydrofacials or jet peels or aquifers, whatever kind of product that you're using. They're also going to go into laser hair removal and IPL. These are kind of entry levels. Now, do all of these make money? No. But if I was a realtor, of course, I only want to sell million dollar homes. If you've ever tried real estate or you know anything about it, you have to sell homes of all different values until you get good enough to only sell the million dollar homes. So you do need things that get people in the door as a new client so that you can prove that they are safe and they're in good hands so that they will try some of these higher end um, services. So in the business plan, not only do I like to list month by month what you're going to do in, in, in terms of fillers, toxins, microderm, microneedling, um, retail sales, and I like to build it slowly. Then I also like to look at what your averages are gonna be per appointment. So that by the end of the um, spreadsheet being filled out, which we have templates to help you with this, if you are thinking of opening a med spa, please reach out. We have a very affordable executive coaching pro uh, program. Um, we have a membership for under 300 a month where you can meet with us weekly on a group call and ask questions. All sorts of templates that can help you save a lot of time and money. So what I like to do is as I fill in what they are going to be doing per month with a build that makes sense, I also share with them what the marketing budget is going to be because we're in financial. But more importantly, I look at the number of appointments it will take to, rent, to render those revenue. So there's top down marketing, which is I'm gonna do $100,000 a month. 50 is gonna come from injectables, 25 from this equipment and 10 from uh, retail and five from peels, let's say. Okay, well, how many appointments does that mean? Because a lot of times you're starting a solo practice. You might only be in two days a week. Is it 20 appointments a week? Is it 30 appointments a week? Can I actually do that? How much does it cost to get people in to do those things? These are the things that the business plan will cover. So once you look at that and you know, okay, well, it's me plus one other person. We have this many hours available. Then you can make sure that your predictions or what's called a performa make sense. Now, what is really important is to get into not only the number of appointments, but where those appointments come from. And that's gonna be the marketing part that I talk about. But before I move from finance, I also wanna explain the cost, the disposable cost or the product cost so that you're talking gross profit and you're dealing with cost of goods. Those are very important for 
um, banks and lenders to know, but really important for you to know, because you have to know how to work smarter instead of harder. You need to know your margins. You need to look at equipment and compare not only the experience in the the level of what it feels like from the patient experience side, but you have to look from the business side. What is the disposable cost? How many do I need to do to break even? That's how you decide whether you can really afford something. You also want to look at, say, real self and look at the clients and what the patients are saying about that equipment. Please do not buy equipment without experiencing that treatment. Even if you have to go pay retail for it, it's worth it. You need to know whether you're going to be able to deliver that customer the results they need in a tolerable fashion. When things are too painful, we'll pay for the series up front, but you know what? We'll do one and then we'll ask for our money back. No small business wants to deal with that because that is painful. So in the financial part of your business plan, you do forecast your revenue and you also forecast your key expenditures. That's going to be rent, marketing, payroll, these are the big three. Cost of goods are critical. And then your overall startup costs. <clears throat> I highly recommend, even if you have the money in the bank, that you lease the equipment. Um, the lease rates are so affordable and you're going to need some operating capital for your website, your marketing, your pay-per-click, which is the quickest way. A high conversion website followed with pay-per-click and limited, uh, you know, a split of some social media paid to build the list is what you need to do. And if you, you know, if you're needing a marketing or ROI or a capacity analysis, email us, reach out to us. We've got lots of tools that can help you with that. Any one of those things I can complete with you within an hour. So if you're needing those for your business plan, I want you to reach out and let's do it right the first time. These things are so critical. We want you to operate with clear goals and standard operating procedures. How to bonus your staff. That's another one. You know, what kind of break even do we need to hit before I can start bonusing my staff as an example? How many people do I need working for me in order to achieve a million dollars in the first year? What's my capacity analysis? Where do my numbers come together? So in the performa area or the financial area, I like to project sales, project marketing, look at the labor and look at the multiple that that staff member will create. And then I like to get into the expense benchmarking and the margins as far as the most profitable services and how you're going to utilize those. Those are the top five that I look at as I create the financial performance and the marketing ROI sheets. So that is really your financial section. That's what they need. And typically, um, if you're getting banking, they're going to want, you know, anywhere between a one, two, three, sometimes up to a five year projection. It depends on if you're seeking venture capital or a loan. Um, you want to be conservative on your numbers with a loan because the banks are conservative. You've got to be very aggressive with the venture capitals. They know that they're going to get a big cut, but they know that eight out of 10 of their deals don't fund. They don't turn out to be profitable for them. So they're looking for an eight to 10 X return and they will want you to shoot for the moon, uh, which is probably why only eight out of 10 of their um, investments work. We'll keep that to ourselves. Anyhow, the next part is going to be really that market position. Are you trying to do a high volume business with really reasonable costs? Are you trying to do a boutique, small one-on-one -on -one, um, physician experience where they really see only the physician, but you're in two or three days a week in a solo suite and you're doing high end things that um, besides injectables, you're doing a few key treatments that are not as common out in the marketplace, I would much rather see you do a couple specialty services with your injectables and peels rather than what everyone else is doing. You cannot get laser hair removal in a Sola suite or something and make money to get out of call. You've got to do something that's two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000. You need to be billing about at least $500 an hour on the low, low, low side, hopefully a thousand in order to really make a go of this as a physician if you're a, if you're providing the services yourself. So the mistake that I see is, okay, I don't want to get in too deep and I want to build this slowly, but I'm going to do it with injectables and microneedling and um, peels and retail. Okay, it's going to be really hard to draw people into you to try you instead of every other med spa out there that offers all of those things. That's where sometimes it's better to decide what is my signature service that I'm going to that I'm going to own. Not a lot of people have it. 
or a lot of people want it. So it doesn't have to be completely unique. Maybe it's cool sculpt, maybe it's uh, evolved, maybe it's M sculpt, but you combine it with a diet program perhaps and a body cleanse program or some way to make it unique and packaging, right? So if you want to do nutrition and diet and and weight loss and inch loss and that kind of thing, muscle building at the same time, that could be a really cool thing for you and the market's not saturated versus microneedling is very cheap to get into. Everybody is doing some kind of microneedling peels and uh, injectables. So we've got to figure out, okay, well, what else can we do to get people's attention with dramatic results and a higher price point so that we can get profitable right away? That's where you're going to move into like your RF microneedling or some of your deeper um, uh, uh, RF debulking and deep heating around maybe the face level uh, to create some marked results on the face and things like that. You can still play with PRP and do some you know, hair stimulation if you'd like. There's some different ways to do that and it's not terribly expensive. But keep in mind if with your market position, you really wanna look around you and you do probably want to invest in one or two pieces of equipment that aren't as known or are really addressing a lot of the needs in the market. So from the, the last time that I looked at the ASP report about uh, 2020, the top five uh, services done in this industry most often are, they don't change very often, toxins, fillers, and then it's like resurfacing, microneedling, and peels. And, and if you look at a lot of these RF microneedling machines, you can do uh, number three, four, and five all with the same piece of equipment. So you don't always have to start with the standard laser hair removal, IPL, laser vein, um, multi-port um, laser setup because all the other big players have those. Maybe you look at it the other way. What is something that is newer that creates a really exciting result that not everybody knows about yet. So there's two ways to look at that, and it really depends on whether you're trying to be the Target or the Nordstrom's in your area. If you are doing a solopreneur situation, it's okay to charge more and to have it just be done with the doctor, but you've gotta have some exclusive types of services that are really gonna get people in to you based on the results that you can post on your Instagram and on your website. Noticeable results without surgery, as an example, is an excellent draw for something like that. Even, you know, adding PDO thread work with the injectables is a little bit of uniqueness. Um, Sculptra, you know, we're dealing with a lot of filler fatigue and Botox fatigue and things like that. So resurfacing and microneedling are coming to be more and more popular. So RF microneedling checks a lot of the boxes. And these are the kinds of things that a consultant can tell you so that you don't make that mistake of buying too many pieces of equipment or too large of a space when you get started instead of the right pieces of equipment, right? The right equipment with low disposable and the wow factor so that they come back and treat another area and they send their friends. Now that brings us to marketing. The digital marketing and marketing for this industry is very specific as to how it works. So please do not get advice from anyone outside this industry for your website, your social media, or your digital marketing campaigns, or your email, because there is a very different way to market to this clientele. It is still 90% women. The primary demographic is the 40 to 54. Yes, we are getting younger people in for lip bogs and, and different things, and that's great, but the you know 25, to 65 is the majority of the market. The 40 to 54s are spending the most of the money, okay? So keep that in mind as you look at these things. That's why when you know your target demographic, you can look at what are these people going to want. Yes, they're gonna want their maintenance. They're gonna want their medical grade skincare. They're gonna want something that create almost surgical results without surgical downtime. That is the key. And comfortable enough so that they can tell their friend, yeah, it really wasn't any big deal. I would do it again, which you need them to do it again. That's why you have to try the service yourself before you buy one of these pieces of equipment. The marketing plan itself, you know, you don't go, you're going to get sold straight to paid social media. It's going to look great. They're gonna tell you you're gonna get 30 leads or 50 leads a month. Social media paid leads are interruptive marketing. They convert at about 10%. They will exhaust you on responding and not getting people in. You're lucky to get 10%, 10 out of 100 to come in for a consultation. Now, if you're new, paid social can build a list of people to market to with the right opt-in setup, contests that lead to a landing page. There are ways to do it and we know how to do that. So if you want some consulting on that or you want someone to take that off your hands, let us know. 
it's very specific. It's taken us years, taken us years and hundreds of thousands of dollars to figure out how to do this. Thank goodness we finally know how. But it is very specific and social media is not just social, it's driven by algorithms and it's very scientific. So put it in the hands of an expert. Don't ask them, what's my reach? How many people saw it? No, how many consults did you get? I don't care about any of the other things. They are all related, yes. More people see it, that's great. As long as 10% or more are engaging or commenting or sharing or clicking, hopefully 30%, 40%, we can get some huge numbers. Do not get confused by reach and brand awareness, which although are important as a startup or any business, what I really wanna measure, how many times do people reach out to you and what conversion ratio did it take to get them in? 100% of the time, I'm gonna get a better result from pay-per-click. Now, I'm not saying just to do one, I'm saying that there is a balance between them and don't get sucked into just thinking if you buy paid social, that that's gonna be all you need, no. You need a conversion-based website that is mobile enabled, number one. You need a call to action that's clear. Do you want them to call you or do you want them to book online? If you want them to book online, make sure they can book online. I can't tell you how many executive coaching clients I have when I look at their website, the link is broken to schedule or when you go to schedule, it's to request something to get an email back. I'm never gonna go to that website again. Don't tell me I can book an appointment on your website if I cannot. That will only frustrate the client. You've got one time to make a first impression. So don't put online booking on your website if you can't do it. Don't put online shopping on your website if you're not set up to sell it. These are just rookie mistakes. Do not do that. If you really need them to call you to book an appointment, have your number up big. Call us for more information. Run the right promotions without all the details. Call for information. Exclusions apply. You do not need to give all the details. Marketing is for one reason, to get the conversation started. The rule of seven tells us that people have to see a message about seven times before they notice it and respond, okay? So that's why you post on social media five times a week, Instagram and Facebook. That's why you have a YouTube. That's why you put out videos. That's why you email. That's why you have events. That's why you run cross promotions and contests of the month. You don't know where they're gonna respond and you don't know when that seed is when that planted seed is actually going to root. But we do know if we do all those things consistently over time, that 5% of your followers will do business with you in that business year. So we need more followers and we need engagement. And that comes from reach. So they're all linked together. You are, you, you are paid too much as a physician or an owner to manage your own social media. That needs to go to someone who A, understands it, and B, is making 20 to $30 an hour. That is not you. Do not sit in a room and do laser hair removal when you're a surgeon, and do not do social media when you're a business owner. It's too high of a cost. Your time is too valuable, and you really don't know what you're trying to do. So, understanding that reach is one thing, engagement is more important, but number of people that call for an appointment is what I like to measure. So if you're looking to buy help in this area, you want to look at the reports of how many consults or how many contacts did it actually make. That lead company can't help you if you can't convert them. I mean, you'll take a, a course like on our website for $3.97, you can take that closing consultation and conversion course about how to sell anything. That's so affordable. Your whole staff can use that as many times as you want. That is an investment worth making because you cannot make a budget big enough to create leads that don't convert or patients that you don't have high retention for. You will drive yourself out of business. So sales training and conversion, you know, conversion training is all so important. And that's where that strategy is. So digital marketing, it is the website, the mobile enabled, what offers you're giving. Social media needs to be Facebook, Instagram, and weekly emailing. More video, the better. There's an algorithm that's proven that works. We've got hundreds of clients that can prove it for you. If you want to know how to do it, you can grab our book, our course, or have us do it for you. But you can measure the results, and I want you to measure how many new clients you get and what they spent. That's the number. It's not complicated. If you are not currently asking in your, in your um, point of sale software, where did you hear about us? Whenever you set up a new client, they absolutely should not be able to set up that client record or the first consultation without filling in the cell that says, where did you hear about us? Stop spending marketing money until you're measuring that because you have no idea what's working. That is really, really important. 
So that's really the marketing side of things. And that's when you get into, um, here's the marketing budget I'm gonna need for pay-per-click, here's how much for my website, here's how much for my scheduling software system, here's my pay, you know, my, my, um, my uh, SEO budget, here's what I'm gonna pay for social media to be managed, as an example. Um, those are the things that go into that portion of your plan, which is your marketing portion of the plan. It's also talking about conversion ratios and how many leads you need in your area in order to build your business. It's looking at your top three competitors. It's looking at um, industry averages and what people buy and how they buy it. These are the things that you want to consider in the marketing plan part of your business plan, which will directly tie back to why you are spending at least 5% on marketing and what that converts, what the cost per lead is for a new client. You also want to calculate the lifetime value of a client. That is really important. So you'll look at things like retention ratios, closing ratios, um, average tickets, how much retail are you selling? What is the mix of um, your services based on physician provided versus uh, lower cost per hour provisions. Are they estheticians, laser techs? It, it varies by state who can operate what kind of machine. But I think that you're getting the idea. So in that marketing section, it is your digital marketing. It is, uh, you know, everything from the website to the paid social to the pay-per-click and the retargeting, the, the regular contact, the videos you're going to do, sharing video testimonials, showing people getting video treatments, getting treatments yourself. These are the things that people interact with. And the way you figure out what works is when you get a lot of likes or comments or shares, do more of that and less of the things that are straight selling and crickets. When you put a product up, you're gonna get very little interaction. But if you get the same product and I put it on my face, I talk about why I like it, I talk about how it smells, um, I talk about how long I've been using it, how long it lasts me, why I like it, why I picked this one over the other, I'm gonna get all kinds of reactions on that. And it can be buy one, get half off the second. It doesn't always have to be 20% off. You wanna cross promote things instead of discount, which is the next part of marketing, which is your annual marketing plan. How do you market so many services effectively throughout the year and make sure you don't miss anything? Make sure you, you aren't missing out on vendor participation. Well, the one page marketing plan that we are famous for is the way you do that. You do a cross promotion for each of the 12 months. You pick one of those items to be your contest of the month. You do a video demonstration on each of those services or products, and you also do a written blog on those. That is your marketing content. And we make sure to post about it five times a week on Instagram and Facebook, and we make sure to do um, once a week emails about the contest of the month or the promotion or the video about our new service. And we stack that on top of quarterly on-site events. They can be one at a time by appointment with COVID things, or they can be an afternoon, or they can be an all day, or they can be an evening, but you pick out four. One anti-aging, one body, one feminine, one retail sale, or if you don't do those things, one VIP night. Um, maybe it's a breast event, maybe it's a body event, uh, maybe it's a laser event. There's all kinds of different ways to do this. We do thousands of them, and that is really the only time that you should give a discount. If you need more information, grab my book, Top 10 Profit Killers, and let us share with you what's really, really working in the industry. You do not have to recreate the wheel. It's right there for you. Then we come into operations, and we are really talking about, at that point, you know, clear job descriptions, um, a clear consultation process so everyone knows how to do a consultation, who's doing the consultations, how long do they last. These are the things that are really critical from operations. How are you paying them? <clears throat> are they really clear about their complete job description, including patient follow-up and upselling and retail goals? I find that people um, out there don't understand that you know an esthetician should have a 50% retail goal. They should also be creating about four times their cost. So if you're paying them $50,000 a year, if they're not creating $200,000 a year in revenue, you've got a problem. You are losing money with that staff member. With an injectable nurse, it's five to seven. <coughs> Sorry guys, <coughs> with a physician, it's even higher, an eight or nine X for a, um, for a surgeon, for example. So when you negotiate salaries, it's really easy to explain how to get a raise. It's based on production. Yay, it's not personal. You're not, you're not hurting anybody's feeling. 
These are industry averages. You know, if you've worked in hospitals, if you've been in the medical industry, you know full-time equivalents. It all still applies here. So don't be afraid to have them sign a non-compete, to um, give them fair goals. And please be careful with commissions. I'm running into a lot of really high commissions. I'd rather do a team bonus and maybe some commissions based on quarterly um, performance. Anyway, we just need to first make sure that they're at least producing the um, multiple that they need to. The one thing that is sort of new that um, you don't find as much in terms of um, uh, these business plans is really considering starting with some sort of a membership structure from the beginning. Uh, this will prove to be very, very helpful because number one, it makes the client stickier. If, they've, if they're paying money monthly to be part of your beauty club or insider club or um, getting their, their Botox at 11 units, $11 a unit instead of 14, whatever your club is, they're less likely to get lured to a competitor with a shiny offer. And that's really important. Um, and you know, I go into a lot of detail about how to create those clubs, how to create the membership plans, um, how to create a, a, you know, a cross promotion that'll actually work. Uh, how much value do you have to put out there? About 20%. Uh, how do you how do you write these so that people respond? Well, call for details. Available this month only, while supplies last. These are things that create urgency and a call to action. <clears throat> and that's why the events work so well. You know you're only going to get the event pricing at the event, and so that's what works so well about events as a quarterly approach to really give you cash injections quarterly, and it gets you away from discounting. The last thing that I would say um, for your business plan is to, you know, you, you've talked about the marketing, the operations, and the financial. You're talking about how much you're going to sell, what it's going to cost you to sell those, what your expenses will be. You can stack those up to industry averages to impress the bank. Um, you can clarify your organizational chart and who's going to do what. You can set goals of production by the multiples. These are things that the bankers are impressed by. These are also super helpful for you. You can set up your chart of accounts correctly with uh, with your cost of goods so that when you look at it, you actually know your profit margins on your retail or on your both your toxins or your fillers or your RF microneedling. Um, understanding how to set up your chart of accounts correctly is something that people rarely do because CPAs do not typically specialize in this industry. Speaking of that, I'm going to get one that does and start teaching them so that we can refer you to someone that knows how to do this. We know how to do it and it's so important. It actually makes your profit and loss into something helpful instead of just a coffee coaster. If you really know what it costs to run your business and what your cost per leads are, you know when to put your foot on the gas or your foot on the brake. You know what your RPMs are. You've got, you've put into your um, navigation where you're trying to go. And all these tools absolutely work, as does digital marketing, when it's done correctly. But you have to know how to use it and in which order. Without a conversion-based website that's mobile-enabled, you don't want to do paid social or geofencing. That's the sprinkles on top of the cupcake. That's not the cupcake. The cupcake is a website, mobile-enabled, SEO, pay-per-click, organic social, then paid social, pay, paid social, maybe geofencing, all the fancy new AI tricks and tips and retargeting. But first things first, you've got to have a foundation before you throw the roof on. And that's where people get very disenchanted with marketing and marketing consultants, and they think marketing doesn't work, just like occasionally planes crash when there's a pilot error. But we know aviation works. We know planes are designed to fly if you know how to fly them. So don't be out there thinking, oh, this digital marketing just doesn't even work. I don't know why everyone's acting like it works, why they say it can be your lowest cost per lead. I can guarantee you it can be your lowest cost per lead and it is for many of our clients. And when they come in and work with us and get to understand this, it, the aha experience of realizing how to look at your return on investment and not caring about anything other than how many new consults did I get from this. It's not about reach. It's not about impressions. Yes, that goes into it. It's about what are we doing to make people want to come in and buy our services. It's that simple. 
now we know how to do that. we've got a lot of free resources on our website. just click the resource tab. we've got online courses for social media with immediate access. you can do it afterwards. you can have your team do it we can do it for you there is a lot of information out there and you can save yourself a lot of heartache time and post traumatic trauma <laughs> after spending a lot of money on this and not getting the result you're looking for so please let us help you get it done right turn it around or do it right the first plot first time reach out for a complimentary consultation and we are happy to help uh, we are here to create a more profitable business for you if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe and click the notification icon to be notified every time we post a new video. And don't forget to grab your free copy of our book and all the resources we've provided. You can find the links in the description below.